just a minute. Okay, uh, I just would like to talk about this final thing. When you use the keyword final, there are some implications. I mean, this final keyword is very useful, especially if you work with inheritance, because it's we've used it not much actually in Java 1, the first part of the course, when we're talking about making constants. Because final actually is a kind of a keyword that works on variables, on methods, and on classes. And it have different um, I mean implications on each one of them. Now, I'd like to show that again, just as a reminder, if I put something to be final, like a variable to be final, and uh, let's say I, I put something like this to be final. Now, as soon as I put this to be final, I have a problem in my class. Why? Because final means you cannot change the value of inside this variable. Which means now I'm trying to change that because this setter tries actually to change the color. And I just mentioned that the color should not be changed. So, final means it, I'm not able to change it. But I'm changing it here. Why is it not complaining about this one, but complaining about this one? Or why is it not complaining about this one, which is also I'm changing it here, but it is complaining about this one, which is if you look at this, is exactly the same line of code. Yes. Exactly. Because these are inside the constructor. I mentioned that this is not going to change. But I did not put the value because I put this, this value are going to change depending on what constructor you're calling. If you call this constructor, the value is going to be no color and it will not change. If you call this constructor, the color is going to be the value that you're going to give me and then it will not change. So when you do this, something like this without putting any value, it means that it will wait for the first value to be in and then it will not allow any changes later on. And then this is what final does to a variable. If I do something like this, well, that's not a string, but like this. Now notice if I do something like this, even those are not working anymore. Because I already have a value, now you can't have another value inside of it. So that's not something that is advisable anyways to put something like this. Because you would like to initialize in the constructor. So let the constructor do their job and initialize everything that you need to do in the constructor that's more neat when you type your code. So that's why this final in a variable means once you put a value inside that variable, it cannot be changed. That's what it does for a variable. Now I can also make final in a method. What is the result of making final a method? Means if I put the method to be final, I'm preventing from overriding it. I'm preventing my subclasses to change the behavior of this class, of this method. Why is that? Well, there are some cases where it might make sense, but uh, I'm going to show you a case that does not make sense why I should do that, but just I'd like to show you that if I put final, I'm going to have an error. And I'm overriding something, let's say set length here. I'm overriding set length that is coming from rectangle. Now, rectangle has this set length what if I do, I put the set length to be final. Now as soon as I do this, I have a problem in square because now square tells me set length in square cannot override set length in rectangle because overridden method is final. Once I put the method to be final, I'm preventing all my subclasses from changing it. Now there are some situations where I don't want to my subclasses to change the, f the way how my method work, this method should be stay the same. But what if I don't like it? Well, that's your business. Don't inherit from this class if you don't like it. Because if you inherit from this class, you will have this method to be available. I am not allowing anyone to change it. There are some cases where it might make sense. I don't have one in mind for now. But you just get the point that if you would like to prevent overriding to happen, just make it final.
that's what it does. Now the last thing is making a class final. When I make a class final, I prevent inheriting from that class. There are some cases when it might make sense, but anyways, let's just see the effect. Now, rectangle is a superclass of square. It's a subclass of shape, but superclass of square. If I make it final, square now is a problem, which will tell me you cannot extend a rectangle, cannot inherit from final rectangle. So which means you can prevent a class from being inherited from. And an example of that is, I just told you just a few minutes ago about these uh, wrapper classes. They're called wrapper classes. It's wrapper like this, that wraps around the primitive data types. Like this double over here. You see this double is, uh, I don't know, I'm just, I'm just trying to avoid the problem. If, so this double here, if I click on it, you see it's it says, uh, I'm just using the uh, control to see this. It shows public final class double, which means they allow you to use it. They don't want you to inherit from it. If you want a class that is like double, like the equivalent of the primitive data type double, well, you have to do it yourself. You cannot inherit from this one. You would like to have the f uh, something that is like it, you have to do it yourself. So there's, there are some cases where you would like to prevent something from happening, and you make it with this final. So if you put final in a variable, you prevent from changing the content of the variable. If you put final in a method, you prevent it from being overloaded, right? No. You cannot prevent it from being overloaded if you make it final. You prevent it from being overridden. And then making it in a class will prevent the class from being inherited. You cannot inherit from that class. It cannot be a superclass. That's what it means. And uh, that's the final. That's the keyword final. Is that OK? So you just need to pay attention to that. So for example, I might give you some code. And in that code, I might give you a class that is this, and also give you the square, the class, and tell you, OK, what is, the, is this code co correct or not? So you have to be careful. Whenever you see a final, make sure that if it's a class, that I'm not inheriting from that class. If it's a method, that I'm not overriding this method. If it's a variable, then I'm not changing that content of that variable. So you have to pay attention to that. Yes? The graph? The graph in the website, which graph? This one? Yeah, OK. Well, it, when it's final, yeah, well, we need to represent it. I don't know exactly how we represent it in this diagram. I have no, I don't remember how we, uh, I never actually used that, so I don't remember how it is. You no, know, I did not. I never used it in a diagram. This is called the UML diagram of a class. Uh, and then we represent it. I don't remember how we do represent that. Maybe we just put the final, something like that. I don't know. I don't, I don't know exactly. I will check it and let you know how to represent that. Actually, we can just Google it. Actually, uh, how to represent, how to represent final in UML. How to show final and okay, these are this website by the way is a very interesting one. Stack Overflow. It allows you to, uh, uh, I mean, ask a question and get some answers from different people, and then many people can just vote for these answers, and you can tell you, okay, these are right. This is the right answer, and you can you can get pretty much answered quickly. So, if you sometimes need to know something, this website is actually one of the websites that I put in the references, but it's a good one to have a look at from time to time. And you're going to find a lot of results when we ask something from Google. You're going to get a lot of results from this Stack Overflow. 
because it's about programming and you can find a lot of different kind of answers. So here it is, you have two answers. This is one way that shows you that this is a final because it has a value that is inside of it immediately. It should be underlined. And also it can just represent maybe something like this read only, some kind of representation that include this read only, which means it, it cannot change it. So this is final for a variable because the question was about final and variable. But uh, what about final for a method? Well, probably it's if the underlying thing is going to be the answer. And final for a class, maybe it's going to be underlined as well. How to show final? Let's see if this one, oh, it's the same answer, same question. Uh, UML class, final fields or final method. Yeah, so the final is uh, underlined, you see here. So those that are underlined, that means they're final. And check this. This is a method. This is underlined. So it is final as well. So we have this final employed. And as we have this, these are the final. Oh, there's not the one. This is a get next ID. Let's find the get next ID, get next ID. No, it, they put it as static. Hmm. Okay, so that's uh, yeah. So this they they are indicating this as underlining the static fields and so static variables and. But what about the final? They don't mention which one is final. Yeah, so they. They put them, put them in all capital letters. But what about the methods? And, uh, constant should be in all caps, but what about the... Uh, because they have a final method, I think I saw a final method, no? Or is it just me? Dot, I saw a final, no, there was not. Okay, how to represent final method in email? And they have some kind of keyword, final, is it? So that's how to tag a method as a final. Simply use something like this. So in the name, you put final, something like that? OK. I don't know, just one guy who r answered that question. Like the abstract, yeah. And same thing for the class, then. If it's class final, you just put final, something like that. There's also something that gives you uh, the guy who is answering the question, is he, I mean, trustworthy? Because how you can trust anyone? Just anyone can answer. But is it something that is going to be a good answer? Is it something that makes sense? Well, in this Stack Overflow, they have something that is, like they have some kind of uh, score or reputation. The more you answer questions, the more you help others, the more moderators, people that have higher reputation just agree with what you say, the more your reputation grows. So that's why if you see that this guy, for example, has 300 in reputation, which is OK, and then this guy has 24,000, which it gives you some idea that it doesn't mean that he's always right, but it's highly probable that he's right. And especially if you have more that votes, and that's going to be more like of those. <coughs> so anyways, that's a good website to have a look at. I think that will make sense for the final. You just probably have this final keyword to be in the class or the methods. And even for the variables, maybe, or just m put them all capital letters or some, if they mention it somewhere indifferently, like having an underlined or something like that, they, they will mention it. And uh, yeah, that's it about this final thing. So to summarize, final in a variable, I cannot change its content. Final for a method, I cannot override it. Final for a class, cannot inherit it. It cannot be, uh, I cannot have a, it cannot be a superclass. It cannot have a subclass and it cannot be a superclass. It cannot be inherited.